The GTAM Tour is proud to present to you some highlights from tournaments in the 2012 season. We'll be showcasing local courses including Coppinwood and Granite Golf Club and giving you a first-hand look at what it's like to play competitive amateur golf. You'll also receive some lessons from the Golf Lab on how to play better golf. 30 minutes of all golf programming starts now. See you on tour. Welcome to the Granite Golf Club for the Capture Scratch Classic. After a brief rust delay this morning, things are off to a great start. Let's grab some words from the head pro. My name is Dan Campbell. I'm the director of golf at the Granite Golf Club. This is my first season I'm completing. I was the head golf professional at the St. Thomas Golf and Country Club for the past 18 years and recently uh, moved up to the Granite Golf Club. The style of the golf course is a little bit of a combination. For the most part, it's a traditional golf course with a lot of tree lines in it. It has a little bit of the modern style. We have some force carries. We have some par threes you have to hit over the marsh. But basically, it is a uh, older design golf course in a modern setting. For players to play well at the golf course, they really need to drive the ball well off the tee. The tree line is about 15 yards off the fairways. So anybody that misses the fairway, they're definitely gonna lose a golf ball. A couple of holes that the players wanna be aware of. We have a strong finishing hole, 16 and 17 are two par fours that play. 16 plays about 485 yards and 17 plays 468 yards. Two very difficult, long golf holes to play. The key is driving the ball in the fairway. You'll be left with long clubs in, whether it's fairway woods or rescue clubs, into smaller greens. And again, greens that are in a position where you've got to put the ball underneath the hole. There is a little bit of elevation change on the 16th hole, so having it on the right tier is going to be very important. In closing, I really think that uh, the players will get a lot of fun, a lot of enjoyment out of it. Uh, I've been asked by a couple of the members how come the golf course has never been rated in the top 100. Uh, and I said to him, to be honest, the reason it's not rated in the top 100 is they just don't have anybody playing the golf course. Uh, in its short 12-year history, it just really has not opened the doors to outside play. And I think that's the only reason that's keeping them off uh, being rated in the top 100 in Canada. Thanks, Dan. Let's jump right onto the course with PJ Corvasi on the 14th hole. A nice uh, hybrid off the tee. Good second shot, pin high. Uh, about 20 feet from the stick above the hole. I knew from the practice screen that I should have just tapped it. Didn't listen to my mind. Went about 10 feet, 8 feet past the hole, and thank God I sunk the butt for my bar. Great save, great save, PJ. Now let's head over to number five with Jay White. He's hitting a provisional ball. Well, we got about 50 yards left. Looks like my first shot, which I thought was going to be lost. Um, Turned out to be lucky in the middle of the open in the rough. A little flopper over the sand trap. Hoping for the best here. <laughs> After a great drive, Jay's chipping lets him down a bit and he takes two putts for double, but he isn't discouraged. We followed his playing partner, John, on the next hole. My name is John Harris from the B flight. We just finished hole six. Made a decent drive. Pushed my approach a little bit, but I got lucky. I got a tree on the edge of the fairway. Bounced out. Did a little bump and run, and had two pretty decent putts. So bogey. I'm happy with that today. John is our flight leader. Uh, the second time I played with John, the third. He's uh, very steady. Very good person to play with. And First time I played with Jay, he's uh, also very pleasant to play with, good golfer. So we're a good group, we're just out here to have fun and enjoy it, and uh, this is my first year on the tour, but it's been awesome. Everybody involved does a great job, it's uh, fantastic. Here are the results from the Capture Scratch Classic.
Hi, I'm Liam Mucklow, and I'm here today to talk to you about a few practice strategies that can help your on-course performance. One of the things that we want to do is always try and practice skills and shots that are going to be more difficult than anything we're ever going to encounter out on the course. So here in the lab, what we do is we actually practice hitting moving targets. So I've got the boys out back measuring the height of the toss, and uh, we're going to do a little skeet shooting here in the lab this morning. Late. Oh yeah, yeah. So the way we got this to work is through practice and trajectory control. We knew that my three iron launches at 11 degrees, so at 20 feet out, we made sure that we had those guys tossing the plate nine feet up off the ground. Come on into the lab and we'll show you how you can control your trajectory like that too. Welcome to the 2012 GTA Amateur Tour season opener at Goppenwood. It was a challenging day at seven degrees. We saw a fair morning that descended into rain, and 30 kilometer winds. Joining us today is Dennis, the head pro at Coppinwood. Let's hear from him. My name is Dennis Firth. I'm the head golf professional here at Coppinwood. I'm just entering my third golf season um, after a 13 year career over at Angus Glen Golf Club. Coppinwood's a special place. It's a golfer's paradise. It's located out of the city. As Soon as you enter the gates here, you feel relaxed, you feel calm, you forget about the busy city around us. Tom Fazio is the designer of the golf course. He was built and ready for play in 2005. And Coppinwood is one of two Fazio built golf courses in Canada. The golfers today, it's gonna to be a little bit easier on them. Our fescue and our native grasses are a little bit um, shorter at this time of year with our off season maintenance practices. So if that straight drive just kind of gets a little bit away from the fairway, that golfer might actually find it today. Whether you're a pro or amateur like Coppinwood, can really be fun, it can be enjoyable, but if you let your guard down at any point, it can really come up to bite you. My best advice to any golfer coming to Coppinwood, keep it simple, put your ball in the fairway, hit the middle of the green, take your par and walk off. Good advice for today, let's head over to the course and meet some of the players. My name is Jeff Lundy, and uh, this is my third season on a, on a tour. Actually, and uh, I'm in the A flight at the moment. Uh, based on the last two holes, looks like I'll be dropping down to the B flight. Lundy prepping for the third tee. A par four with 407 yards to the pin. Off the tee, you'll carry the ball at least 150 yards to the fairway. You can stay vigilant of the bunkers on either side. As long as you keep it straight, you'll stay out of trouble. Lundy's tee shot lands just right of the fairway. Shape of it, but apparently I'm safe, so that's good news. It looks like I've got a pretty tough shot coming in the green, so we'll see what happens. About 180 yards from the pin in the rough, Lundy with the six iron. Comes away just 20 yards to the pin. He chips up, but falls short, leaving him with a 15 foot putt for par. The putt. Just a little shy. Lundy will tap that in with a double on the first and the second. He's in good spirits taking the bogey. We went a little bit better in the last two holes, so if we keep trending this way, it should be pretty good. Um, so yeah, not a bad hole. I like that hole. Over to the 13th with Jeremy Choi. He's putting for eagle, contending with the grade and the massive 30 kilometer winds. Just a bit outside, Choi sinks it for the bird. Now to the 15th with Choi. A strong 250 yard drive lands just off the fairway. Well, the black marker says 226 to the pin. Shooting into the wind, Jeremy hits a four iron hoping to land short. He does and lands in the bunker. He chips out, landing long over the green. Choi chips up and hits a three putt for double.
back to the front nine, par five, on the sixth. Um, my name's Fred. I've been playing with the tour for about six to eight years now. Flight is now A. Yeah, it used to be in C, and went up to B, now A. It's a tough transition every time you follow up. <laughs> Snell with a great drive off the tee. Fell out of my shoes. Even with some trouble. It's a 220 yard draw hook to the fairway. He's hitting his six iron, hoping to land about 120 yards from the pin. First place could solve Snell's trouble with a new pair of Echo shoes. Proud sponsor. Uh, 128, which is a nice line on the green. So a little pitching wedge. With the wind, should be fine. Take it easy, make sure it doesn't go too far. The greens are dangerous on this course. He chips well and lands 12 feet from the hole uphill. First putt. Misses, but brings it home for the second for par. Good hole. In the championship flight, Steve Thompson came out on top, scoring 74. John Harrington shot 75 for second, and Aldoro and Chris Reed tied for third at 76. In the A flight, Bob Lorian shot a 76 for first, all with a score of 80. Paul Galbraith finished second, and Matt Delillo and Michael Smith tied for third. After an exciting playoff, Peter Cuthbert wins the B flight. Tied at 81 for second was Brett Perry. Mark Armitage takes third with 82. In the C flight, Troy Langley shot a 90 for first. Ken Graham comes in second with a 93, followed by Brendan Cameron with a 94. Hi, I'm Liam Mucklow, and in our third installment for the Urban Golf Series, we're going to teach you how to get out of a jam if you hook yourself on the second floor of the building. In order to do that, we need to hit the knockdown shot. So, I've got my six iron here, and just a couple things that we need to make sure we do if we want to be able to pull this off. First thing when we set up, we can put the ball back in our stance a little bit if we want, but the most important thing is, again, we've got to keep that weight on the lead leg, we got to make sure we don't roll off to the back foot. That's going to cause us to hit the ball a little bit too high. From there, we want to keep our hands forward. And as we go ahead and make this motion, it's not about hitting it hard. It's about hitting it solid and keeping the hands ahead of the club and the shoulders moving. That's how we control the trajectory, and we also make sure that we don't hook it. Now that we know what to do mechanically, we need to apply this shot to our environment. So in this particular case, I've got about eight feet of clearance above my head. I've got a four foot wide gate that I need to go through here. If I shut my shoulders down and go ahead and flip hook it, like we usually miss these shots, I'm going straight into one of the 55 inch LCDs. And if I happen to get a little bit yippy and hit it right off the hosel, it's going right down into the master bay off one of the four screens there. Let's go ahead, hit this shot, see what we get. All right, so we're actually going to hit some shots here. And I've got our head teaching professional and hapless leaf fan, Kyle Freer, down there to 10 net, see if he can stop it from going through the tent. Ooh, high on the glove side. Let's see if we can rattle one in on him. Oh boy, the Leafs could use a goalie that good. Let's take them low stick side. Ah, oh, nice save. Now onto the course to meet our first featured player. He's just finishing up the front nine. Chris Corvese, uh, champ flight right now. This is my fourth year on the tour. Last hole, nine par four, was about four, four sixty I think it was playing. Hit a three wood off the tee. Nice little draw, ended up about 90 yards from the, uh, the green. Hit a nice lob wedge in and drained the putt for a bird. 
uh, thank you guys for showing up when you did. <laughs> I think if the next tour turns out well, you guys might not be filming anybody else the rest of the day because you might hold your camera gear hostage. Awesome. All right. There, okay. Thanks. Hi, my name is uh, Dante Carlos. I belong to the B group, a uh, very competitive group, a nice bunch of people. Hole number six at Laura Bay, uh, handicap one, the hardest hole on the course. Uh, right off the bat, I looked at the card. It's pretty long for me. I won't reach it in two. Uh, drove it 240, uh, approached the 100 yards, about another 200, and then 100 yards in. Mission accomplished, on in three. <laughs> Par five, handicap one, on in three. Lucky enough to get a birdie. Yeah, nice. Yes. On our way to the back nine, Jeff Gates flagged us down to show off his killer long drive. We're about 14 yards off, right? Steve Zerman, I'm in uh, B Flight. I've been playing on tour for about, uh, say it's my fourth year. I've never played here before and I'm, I'm pretty pleased. I have absolutely no complaints and I'd, I'd love to see it back on tour and uh, if it is on tour, I'll be playing it again. 16, we got a severe dogleg par five here, so I'm just gonna, you know, grip it and rip it and uh, hopefully uh, find the fairway somewhere down there. Great. Is that good? Yeah. You think that's good? Yeah. <laughs> so here we are uh, just off the right side of the fairway. Uh, I got about uh, 230 yards into uh, into the green here. I got a little tree here on the side so I'm just going to try and go left of it and cut it a bit and hopefully get up by the green. I managed to hit it past the tree and almost got a pin high so I'm going to try and chip it close. We'll see what I can do. I chipped it pretty close, but unfortunately I missed the putt, so I walked away with a no stress par on that one. The way it works here is you get into a group and you get to play with people the same ability as you. Look, one, two, three. Every drive, every shot, it's up to the putting. What a tour. I love the course, fantastic. People we meet, the courses we play, uh, you can't ask for anything better. Couldn't be happier out here. I love the access to the private courses, just the way the tour is run. Uh, everything about it is pretty much great. You know, I love the guys, the camaraderie and the competition. It's just all around a good time. It's the people, everybody on tour here. I have not met one person here that I didn't like. You guys got to come and uh, uh, play with us. Let's take a look at the scores for day one. Tomorrow's event will be a reverse tee order based on these standings. For this week's installment of Urban Golf, we're going to bring you the British Open Special. I'm going to teach you how to hit a bank shot in case you fly over and euchre yourself on 17 at St. Andrews. A couple keys to banking the ball properly. Number one, obviously we need to control the trajectory, pick our rebound point off the wall. The second thing that most people forget is we also have to take into account how the backspin is going to affect the first bank off the wall. Once it bounces, it's actually going to come up with top spin, so we've got to feel like we play it a little short. Here we go.
easy par. My name is Joshua Kingsmill. I'm in the uh, A flight. Um, I'm also a sponsor of the tour. Kinger Vision is my name from BMO Nesbitt Burns. I'm the investment advisor to the GCA tour. So he's played the, the ninth hole, pounded out a long drive for the cameras, yanked a little bit of a wedge uh, long left. Made a nice little putt, par. I'm gonna get a birdie on this hole because the guy I'm playing with in the group he got uh, par birdie. I caught him with a blue stone by the edge. Hi, my name is Wayne Amaral. My first year on the tour. I'm in the B flight. I joined this tour solely for the courses. I love to play high-end courses. They have a huge list of them. So these are places that I wouldn't phantom to see myself coming up with three other buddies. I'm not gonna play them all. But I will play a good chunk of them. Yeah. We just finished the 14th dog leg right. Uh, very lovely hole. Looked beautiful from the tee deck. Uh, luckily, I got the tee shot exactly where I was aiming for. And got my nice fade in. I was 130-ish away. Took the nice eight iron. Put it right where I wanted it. My eight iron is my 135 club. So plus minus, I'm good with it. Gets me in putting range, I hope. That time it did. Had the birdie putt, gave it too much respect on the break, but uh, luckily we had the nice little tap in for par. I'll take that any day. My playing partners are great. These, uh, these two gentlemen, first time I've met them, very friendly, very open. Everybody's a golfer, just it. They play a lot of golf, so we always have a good time out here. Here are the results from day two of the Taylor Made Major. In this episode of Urban Golf, we're going to talk to you about how to maximize your distance. We use TrackMan here for all of our driver fittings and it allows us to help select the optimum shaft, loft and club head. A couple of things that we're taking a look for with everyone who comes in, we need to maximize smash factor, have a good high launch and keep the spin rate down. Let's see how this driver works out for me. All right, that's a great example right there. If you take a look here, I've got my vertical launch at the optimum of 14. I kept my spin under 3,000, 287 total. We're good to go. Hello and welcome to the GTA Amateur Tour Championship. In beautiful Caledon Village, the final two-day tour event saw competition come to a close with potentially the most fair weather conditions to date. Today marks the day that the Dell Order of Merit ridings are decided. Using the top eight scores from each player, Flights will crown their GTA champion of 2012. Here's some of the team from the GTA Tour to tell us a bit about the course. Hi, my name is Marshall Hoare. I'm managing operations for the 2012 season on the GTA M Tour. Jason Gendron, this is my first year at the GTA Amateur Tour. This is the 2012 Tour Championship. I think from uh, a strategic point of view, uh, day one is kind of the practice round. Learning the greens, learning the golden rule here, keep the ball below the hole. Day two, you'll probably see more guys hit a few irons and a few hybrids off the tee as opposed to just bomb and driver. Your left, your right, you're in trouble. I don't know what people are going to think at the end of the day because there's going to be so many different ways to play a course like this and the difficulties and the green speeds and that sort of thing. Or else, you know, a two, three, four putt can, uh, can be in the cards for you. Peter Cuthbert, B-Flight Tour Season Ordinary Champion. Had a great couple days at this amazing course, Devil's Pulpit. Went really low on day one, uh, unfortunately didn't follow it up on day two. Struggled out there a little bit, fast greens, tough pin placements. Um, had a great time, great company. Uh, can't say enough good things about the GTA. Over to Michael Corvese, A-Flight Champion. It is so difficult. 
There's no easy shot. The approach shots are ridiculously hard. Find me and just making sure that if I just put a nice number up, it's going to be hard for them to beat me. I, you know, what I thought was, you know, if I'm up by like three or four shots on a few guys, they're going to have to come in with a 73 or 74 in this course, and that's not going to be easy to do. So I felt just par out, make a couple of lucky birdies along the way, which I did, and make it tough for them. They got to shoot lights out. Champ flight and all-round winner Joe McIntyre. Sorry, I didn't play so great. I hit the ball okay. I just didn't score well. I didn't have my usual caddy yesterday, so that really threw me off. Uh, but today I played great. Tee to green. I made a few putts. Made a few good par saves and was able to shoot 69. So that felt good. Bob Reed, C flight champ, 2012. <laughs> it was a wonderful day. I did play that well, and thank God I uh, played well <laughs> earlier. <laughs> means a lot to me because I've played on the tour now three years. He is going right and, at it. Uh, I didn't do that well and it was it was great to uh, you know improve my game to the point where I could actually win this. Closing out the final event of 2012, Joe McIntyre leads at 144, John Harrington follows with a 157, and John Lavoie ties Rocky Hodge for third, shooting 158. Mike Corvese, Sean Harvey, and Bob Lorian are in a close lead, 160, 163, and 167, while Fergus O'Rafferty takes it with 168 over Paul Inglis and Peter Cuthbert, matching at 172. In the sea flight, Anthony Terminesi over Carl Thompson, with Troy the Boy Langley following closely behind with a 190.